Welcome to Hustle and Pro. I'm your host, Kelly Walker, and today we're somewhere different, somewhere we've never been that we're not usually recording from. We're at um, FISD's new swim center. It's really beautiful, if you can see it behind us. It looks like a green screen, but it's not. Um, we're actually sitting here, and we are sitting here for a reason. Our guest today is Connor McKenna, and he is no stranger to this place, and so that's why we came here. We're gonna learn about Connor's story and um, hear what he's been up to. So welcome to Hustle and Pro. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Very exciting. I'm excited to hear this. We're going to talk about your swimming, obviously, mm -hmm. but I also want to know about your sports background. Is swimming all you've ever done, or have you done other things in the past when you were littler? Uh, when I was younger, I tried a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. I've done, like, tried football, I've tried track, I've tried wrestling, I've tried a lot of, like, a season of a whole bunch of sports, but swimming was one of the first sports I tried. Uh, I've always been around water and after like my first season of swimming just over summer league It was the sport I had the most fun with that felt most natural and none of the other sports really clicked Yeah, so for the last like 10 years. It's okay. really just I was gonna swimming. say what age was that first summer of swimming? Um, like, I think I was Five maybe yeah, I think okay. I was really young five or six when I first started swimming and then That's great. That's young. Yeah. Yeah, and then the last eight or nine years has been 100% competitive swimming, taking it seriously. Focus on swimming. Yeah. All right. So then, um, when you're not in the pool, mm -hmm. what what do you do to? I'm sure you don't have a ton of free time um, when you're competitively swimming. Mm -hmm. But what do you do to fill that time when you're not swimming? Um, most of my hobbies are because uh, swimming takes out a lot of energy and uh, a lot of my time itself. Most of my hobbies are pretty laid back. Uh, watch a lot of TV kind of just lounge around the house, hang out with friends, family, um, eat a lot. One of my favorite hobbies is just, we have two little pantries, the main one, and then just another one for like other assorted snacks that just stockpile up easier. So one of my favorite hobbies is fridge, pantry, pantry, and wow. I just cycle between. So you make the double pantry route. Oh yeah, back so and forth. So this is, swimming burns a lot of calories and you're mm -hmm. just always, always hungry, always yeah. eating. Always yeah. eating. Do you have to be careful? Um, like, do swimmers have to be careful what they eat? Like some other sports, you know, if you're a wrestler um, or some other things where you're like watching your calorie intake and all that, or you just, you good to go? I personally don't watch anything with what exactly I'm eating or the amount that I'm eating. I eat, I eat the foods I eat and the amounts I eat to feel good in practice. Yeah. And usually what that ends up being is just a lot of food. Um, and my mom cooks really healthy, so I, I eat healthy dinners every night. I eat healthy lunches for the most part. I eat healthy breakfasts. But in between, you know, there's a lot of leeway with snacks and just snacks, munching yeah. on stuff. There's no shortage of ice cream same, or anything. It's same. I'm in the food. same boat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to talk to you about your recent success with swimming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of it, right? So I'm going to read some things that I, I think I know. Correct me if any of this is wrong. Um, you guys, Wakeland, just became back-to-back -back state champions champions um mm -hmm. you're an olympics qualifier for 200 meter butterfly um back to back 100 fly champ and recently 200 freestyle champ Is so there's a, wrong, right? a couple things okay. so olympic trials qualifier okay there's a big jump from the trials to actually making the team um so the trial scouts are the the highest cuts in usa swimming like in swimming, the trials cut is the highest qualification you can get. Okay. But making the Olympic team is just a whole nother step up above that. So I, I earned my trials cut. Um, and then with the high school swimming, I was back to back in the 100 fly sophomore and junior year. And okay. then this year I ended up placing second. Okay. Um, so back to first, first, second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, but back to the trials thing. So. So you make that, you qualify for that. Mm -hmm. Then is that like the end of where that ends up or does, does getting to that step for trials qualifier then get you a chance to do something else? So getting the qualification before the Tokyo Olympics this past year, um, over the summer there was the actual trials meet to where all the qualifiers ended up actually qualifying for the Olympic mm -hmm. Games. So for the Olympics, it's obviously a four year cycle. This past year was a little strange with yeah. COVID, delaying the Olympics by a year. So I wouldn't have been to the trials had it not been pushed back a year, because I got my cut in December of 2020. Oh, okay, yeah. okay so. so tell me about state and what was that experience like for you guys? Um, so the road to state, swimming is a really long season. It starts right when school starts in August okay. and then our state isn't until February. 
So a lot of the fall sports end way earlier. We don't even enter championship season until January. So it's a long road, a lot of hard practice for a while, but then the team's there the whole season. Everyone's pushing each other the whole season. We have an incredibly supportive team, um, a great, great group of guys and girls who work hard every day. So by the time we get to championship season, it's all about placement, advancing to the next level, and then when we go to state, it's obvious. It's just, it's my favorite meet that I've ever been to, and it's just only gotten better as the years went on. My four-year run, we've had, um, I wouldn't say an intense rivalry. The guys at Georgetown who've won, they won my freshman and sophomore year oh, okay. at state. Or don't quote me on that. They, they've been good all four they, years. You, they Either were up there. first or second or third, all four years. Georgetown. Georgetown, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And they're they're a great group of guys. I race them in club all the time. Really awesome, really awesome crew. And so last year, it came down to eight points was the deciding factor between first and second. This year, it was about 90 points. Oh, my goodness. So it wasn't towards the end of the meet. The pressure's still there to do our best, like any other meet. Sure, but the but pressure to win is... Yeah lessened a little bit because the margin yeah because you've got it mm -hmm. at some point you know like you're you're set yeah. to win because yeah. of the work you've put in already and now like mm -hmm. the points add up yeah so we're going to talk a little bit more about like what you're doing from here and mm -hmm. a couple other things but we're going to take a, a quick break so we're going to take a quick break and then when we come back we'll hear more from connor mckenna on some of his future goals and what's coming next We'll be back to the show in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about Beyond Studio Frisco. It's where I'm going for Pilates, and I love it, and I want to share it with you guys. They have tempo-specific beats with Pilates-inspired movements to keep your body lean, healthy, and mobile. You can actually get your first class free if you're a Hustle & Pro listener. So you enter in the code Hustle and Pro. that's H-U-S-T-L-E, ampersign, P-R-O, and you can get your first class free. So go check it out and learn more and get the schedule at thebeyondstudios.com. That's thebeyondstudios.com. For one-on-one -on -one tutoring for every student, all ages and all subjects, call Tutor Doctor. They even make house calls. They provide in-home or online learning for all types and all goals. And don't forget Tutor Doctor for SAT and ACT test prep. So call for your free consultation today, 972-703-9344, or go to tutordoctor.com slash Frisco. Tutor Doctor, how learning hits home. Welcome back. We're back with Connor McKenna. We were talking about Connor's and Wakeland's team, swim teams, um, experience at state and kind of the back-to-back -back wins and how exciting that was so Connor I was gonna ask you so obviously I didn't realize you were there all four years mm -hmm. so then kind of walk me through then like what what was the success of those four years like your freshman year mm -hmm. on? so stepping back a year before I even showed up to this program uh, my older brother uh, and another guy a lot older than me he was a senior when I was a freshman my older brother's a couple years older than me so the year before I showed up, when they were a junior and my older brother was a sophomore, they really got the momentum swinging on the team. Um, they're both outstanding leaders and they really helped swing the momentum of our team. And so they led us, when I showed up my freshman year and they continued the momentum swing, we went from placing 17th at state to my freshman year we placed second at state. So That's a nice jump. Yeah. That was, I was happy to be a part of that showing yeah. up my freshman year and being able to go to the state meet. But was... I love that you recognize that the older guys and mm -hmm. girls paved that way for you. And it's not like you just show up and oh, oh no, easily it's, it's winning. Yeah. Like you, and that's because one of them is your brother. So mm -hmm. you probably growing up saw yeah. that path and, yeah. and you know his journey going through all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so following their momentum, it was just incredibly exciting show up and play second after all the work just my freshman year it was first year on the team didn't know how state was going to go and then to have it go so well was just amazing right and then falling through the years my sophomore year we ended up placing second again um but the main thing that really progressed year by year was just the team culture that we had just continued to swing and continue to improve and so my junior year when we ended up winning it really goes back to just the culture that we developed years and years before I even showed up, the culture just started improving and improving. 
It so takes now, time to build those programs. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of new schools here in Frisco. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I sometimes like feel for those kids and parents and you're like, it's really fun to be at a new school. It's clean and it's new mm -hmm. and the building's amazing. But as athletes, you know, like oh, it's going to be hard. It's yeah. going to take time to like build all of that. Just the mesh that it takes to like build mm -hmm. traditions and programs and the spirit and like, not that that is, makes you the skill, but it all somehow matters mm -hmm. to make the program click, right? Oh, absolutely. It was, when we show up at any meet, you know, the energy's high, we're all cheering for each other. We're, we're a loud team, we're an energetic team, and we're all there for each other, cheering for each other, and it's just only gotten better as the years have gone on. So all that sounds good. Have there been hiccups and challenges? I mean, have there been major issues that either you have individually, mm -hmm. even like swimming club, or your team has had to face that you had to overcome? Um, so very fortunately, we I haven't experienced too many major challenges. This, the training itself is hard, and that's a, a challenge in and of itself. But yeah, like the day to day challenge. The day to day grind is challenging, but as a team we've never had any major issues with covid we had some swimmers end up getting into quarantine and then coming back into training or missing out on the districts or regionals meet because of covid quarantining sure i think but, covid made all i mean in all kinds yeah. of walks of life especially like the young adults like more just realizing that you have to adapt mm -hmm. you're out you're not in control of these things and you just have to like wait it out which is you know a lot of the COVID mm -hmm. stuff or just pivot and adapt to whatever happens whatever's happening in that situation is happening to kind of all the teams at the same time mm -hmm. and you just have to like roll with it and figure out how to not let it shake you and, and keep going like yeah. do you feel like um that is like a life lesson that you'll take forward as going through that as a younger athlete that you now know like i can i can change the things that i was used to oh absolutely it was when we got back from COVID, unlike a lot of sports where you can kind of get some alternative where, oh, I can't go like to a track because they're closed, but running is still running, even though it's, it's not the same. And I can't really speak for track and how, how COVID affected those athletes. But swimming, when pools are closed, there's no real alternative to getting in yards in the actual pool. So COVID was a big challenge, but it kind of affected everyone in the state and in the US, more or less everyone was affected by it. So I don't yeah. account it really a challenge for Wakeland specifically right. because everyone went through it. That's good that you don't have any major, you know, issues mm -hmm. that you've had to face yet. That's good. Um, that's also because you're probably prepared and like you said, you do the day mm -hmm. in and the day in and day out work. It helps for a smoother season yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna talk about your next steps like what is coming up for you I know that you're gonna keep swimming mm -hmm. right so what does that look like going forward so I have one more season of club swimming left before I head to swim for the at the college level uh, so with club swimming we have now finished our short course season which at the pool behind us you see is a short way across the pool okay and we're about to enter the long course season where we swim the 50 long meter ways. course instead of a 25 yard course Okay. So that'll last me uh, this summer up until I'll head to Princeton in the fall to swim for them. To Princeton? Yes, ma'am. That's amazing. Was Princeton something that you always knew you wanted to, you know, you wanted to swim mm -hmm. there? Or is that something that happened like later in your high school career that you got the chance to go there? So it was definitely a, a lot later in my high school career. Uh, as a younger swimmer and even my freshman and sophomore year, I knew I wanted to continue swimming, but I didn't have any grasp on what that looked like or how the college process, the college recruiting process went or really what my options could even be. Yeah. And even up until when recruiting opened, I hadn't put much thought to what I was even looking for. So the recruiting process itself, it was interesting, it was fun. I learned a lot about myself and what I am looking to get out of the next four years. And it's very certain to say Princeton is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm so so unbelievably excited that's great. congratulations Thank that's you. a huge deal I mean, i'm sure you know and i'm sure your family is talking about it and is proud but that's a really big accomplishment just to Thank be able you. to go there and then you get to compete there okay you mentioned earlier you have a brother in the family mm -hmm. that swims so i was gonna i was gonna ask you where do you get this competitive spirit obviously you have it you 
compete swimming mm. and you compete for your school um, and you're going to continue that and I'm mm. assuming it's a competitive swim program there so where does that come from um I don't know if I can pinpoint one specific point or place or reason or why um, I've always been competitive I think with my brothers and just my family growing up really really young uh, I'm the middle child of three brothers actually okay. so having an older brother who's been like always better than me at sports when I was younger and a younger brother who because he's younger than me smaller than me I was better than him at most sports when we were little kind of having that competitive range of here's a guy that I want to get better yeah. than and here's a guy that I want to keep getting widen the range of I'm more better yeah like you were getting pushed on. and I was you getting were also pushed pushing. from both sides you kind of saw both pieces yeah. though like you could compete with someone and beat them and mm -hmm. then you also felt beat by someone else so that yeah. probably like helped you on both mm -hmm. sides I was chasing and being chased by yeah um, yeah, yeah that's so awesome. that that helped me realize or get a, at least a drive for I want to compete at some point and then I think my parents and just their support of at the end of the day it's I mean it is for fun competing is fun but the placement itself there's never been a, a pressure behind doing well so it's all been on me to just have fun with it That's great. And I think of a, as I've developed as an athlete I've just gotten more and more into the sport and into wanting to be better and wanting to improve and it's just snowballed till I'm here today. What inspires you? Are there swimmers that inspire you or different sports and different athletes that inspire you? I don't think I've ever had um, like an idol athlete. I think s swimming for me has always been a very like self-motivated thing. There's a ton of swimmers that um, inspire me and motivate me. Um, seeing younger guys break age-old records mm -hmm. and current Olympians and current U.S. national team members just go unbelievable times and even NCAA swimmers at Princeton and just in the NCAA in general seeing fast swimming just gets me excited it gets me motivated of wanting to sort of reach those levels right. so for me there's a ton of guys I mean my brother for one uh, as a swimmer but there's just any fast swimming at any level just gets me excited gets me motivated I love that that's great and I appreciate you. you taking your time I know that you probably have busy that we're here at a school day <laughs> there's some activity behind us but mm -hmm. I appreciate you taking your time and sitting down and giving us a little bit of a behind-the-scenes peek at what you guys have been up to at Wakeland of course thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk yeah no problem and thank you for listening to this episode of Hustle & Pro. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And if you don't follow us yet on Instagram, follow us at Hustle & Pro. We'll see you next time.